Earlier this week, the, the Washington Post ran an opinion piece that has gotten a, quite a bit of coverage saying that everyone should stop complaining about understaffed stores and supply chain problems. Unbelievable. The American people just need to quit complaining about what they have been used to for decades and centuries is actually having the products they need on the shelves. In other words, the American people should lower their expectations, they were saying, and just accept that this administration and the outgoing majority in Congress can't seem to get anything right. Secretary of Transportation said, look, these shortages are because the economy is good. Expecting that people are going to accept that paying over $3 for a gallon of gas is good, and the inflation that we're seeing is good, yeah, it may be that the people are buying, but what they're getting for what they're spending is less than it was in the previous administration. That's clear. I got a better idea. Let's stop pushing the policies that are causing the problems. Out of control spending is causing consumer prices to skyrocket. The massive expansion of entitlements has caused millions of people to stay at home and not go to work. Hence the supply chain catastrophe that we're currently in. There's an all time record of unfilled jobs. And by the way, uh, uh, an economist just came out and said the reconciliation bill will cost 8 million jobs. I guess that's one way of balancing out the 10 million jobs that are available. Just make 8 million of them disappear. Takes care of part of it. But the outgoing majority is engaging in the very definition of insanity. They're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. I have some bad news for the outgoing majority. A new poll came out yesterday which shows that 62% of Americans believe the Biden administration's out-of-control spending policies are responsible for the skyrocketing inflation that we're experiencing. In other words, they don't want Congress to spend another $5 trillion because that's the primary cause of this infl inflation. Also, I might add, two-thirds are opposed to the Orwellian proposal to spy on their bank accounts. But even with 70, nearly 75% or 73% or 66%, whatever the, the numbers are, an overwhelming majority of Americans opposed to this, the lame duck speaker, Nancy Pelosi, has continued to push this proposal. Mr. Dickerson, would spending another $5 trillion to expand entitlements make our economic problems better or worse? Thank you so much for that question. I think that's a, a really key question, and I'm really glad you're bringing that to the forefront. I think that the proposal in front of Congress would uh, significantly exacerbate the problems that we're seeing, that our families and our, our communities are seeing. Mr. Dickerson, housing prices have skyrocketed, skyrocketed over the last year and a half. Would another 330 billion of housing entitlement spending make the housing market better or worse? See how it would. Do you think it would make it worse? How it would make it worse. Uh, how it would make it better. I think it's it's basic economics, and it's it's interesting that one of my colleagues on the other side just mentioned that the the federal government has been engaged in federal housing for 80 years, which makes me think of a quote by Ronald Reagan, which was the closest thing to eternal life on this planet is a government program. It's it, whether it works or it doesn't. We just believe to throw more money into it will fix the problems. But as Ronald Reagan said that government is not the solution to the problem. Government is the problem in most instances. The economic disaster we find ourselves in is a direct result of government meddling in the economy and out of control spending. The economy was at full strength not long ago when Republicans were in control and we can get that back. We can get back to that and it looks as if we're on a trajectory to be able to do that uh, before too long. The solution is simple, get the government out of the way, empower the American people. They can take care of their problems and let's make equal opportunity for everyone. With that, I yield back. I'd just like to ask if, uh, when you talk about government spending, did you support the government spending for all of the restaurants and the airlines and all of the big businesses that also were beneficiaries of the government response uh, to the pandemic? Well, Madam Chair, if I can reclaim that time to answer you, um, I did support that because that that was an issue, an economic issue that the government caused. 
And so therefore, I did support the government providing relief to private institutions who were forced to, to shut their doors because of government mandates.